Hello gamers, geeks and gays, my name is Sturx and you're watching Firewatch. This is a game I've kind of wanted to play since release actually. I remember seeing it, I remember seeing Markiplier did a let's play of it, but I never got around to watching it, uh, I never got around to playing it. Time happened and now we're several years past the launch and now we're here playing it. This is a reward for you guys for getting me to 200 subscribers, you did a poll. Um, an overwhelming majority of people wanted to see Firewatch, so here we are. I know it's got similar kind of vibes to Outer Wilds and that, you know, it's a good story. You can only really play the story through once um, and get the same feeling. Other than that, I know nothing about the game. Um, we are a Firewatchman, Firewatch person. Um, I know it's a big thing in the States. We don't really have them here. Places where there's wildfires, you usually have a tower like this, and their job is to keep an eye out for wildfires. I think. I presume so. Um, I think there's something similar in Fallout 76. You can get some kind of, like, fire watch tower in there, I believe. I need to find that next time I'm playing that. Anyway, I'm rambling too much. What we're going to do, we're going to go straight to a new game um, and see what this is all about. First of all, though, I love the art style. I love the colours. Shapes and colours. I'm quite simple like that. Anything with nice vibrant colours, I'm hooked. Are we at a bar? A restaurant? It sounds like a restaurant. Boulder, Colorado, 1975. You see Julia. Ah, okay, here we go. I see Julia. She's about your age, late 20s. Laughing with well-dressed professors and grad students from nearby CU Boulder. You, Henry, are out drinking with your pals. You approach her. You are drunk. <laughs> Which way do we take this? So, uh, what's, you know, your major? Or I can be, you, 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 you're pretty. You're pretty. You, you're pretty. You're pretty, she says coolly. You are not. You are a future hangover. What? <laughs> you reply, confused. Maybe not quite as, maybe it's more of a, what? You reply, confused. Less, less percussive. Someone should buy you a cheeseburger, she says. She flags down a waiter, and one week later, you're Julia's boyfriend. The soundtrack is not filling me with hope for me getting through this without crying. Oh, oh, I'm putting on the rucksack. Am I gonna drive? Am I allowed to drive? You date for over a year. She drives you absolutely nuts. It's great. You move in. You share an apartment near the school with a view of the mountains. You two drink beers out on the deck drink beer just about anywhere. Life is good. Julia wants to get a dog. There's a scruffy, undersized beagle. Julia is in love. She wants to bring it with her to class. There's also an intimidating but gentle-eyed German shepherd. Nothing bad could happen to Julia while walking this dog. It's badass. 
Oh no. Is that foreshadowing? She likes the beagle. Bucket is a good dog. And a week later, you've totally forgotten about the other one. Julia loves him. You love him too. 1979. You talk out on the deck. It's summer. 9.30pm. And the heat still radiates off the high desert. What do you think about kids? She asks. Kids? If they're not very smart or good at much. I'm saying if you and I have some. A couple of little idiots. That'd be pretty good. In that case, we should probably get married. Ah. I would like that, you say. These kids are going to be screwed up enough. It's probably for the best that their parents are hitched. You say she's absolutely right. Don't do it, game. I know what you're doing. I know what you're doing. I know for a fact what you're doing. We've got a whole map. Does it say where we are? Where am I? It usually says on these kind of things, you are here. Do not forget to check in. No fireworks. Learn to live with bears. Thoroughfare trail is not recommended for inexperienced hikers. Thoroughfare is a primitive backcountry trail. I like backcountry trails. Backcountry trails make me happy. We don't really have very many. Actually, no, we've got quite a few here, to be fair. 1980. It's a Thursday night and Julia is four hours late. She doesn't call. You're worried. And you're getting angrier by the minute. She walks in after you've gone to bed. She's not quite drunk, but she's clearly been having a fun time. You fight when she gets between the sheets. You ignore her. Passive aggressive. You don't touch each other all night. Next day, you feel guilty for being so angry and ask her about her evening. She says it was great. You hold on to a tiny pill of resentment. You make some coffee and go to work. 1981, Julia still likes to draw. She draws plants from her research. She draws all the places you go. She draws you. You frolic like a Victoria's Secret model. Of course I do. Julia was right. You are very pretty. Do I have to come all this way just to get to work? This is stunning, guys. <laughs> oh my god. So we're going to Two Forks Fire Lookout. Spacebar to climb over obstructions. Fantastic. Oh my god. 1982, during the summers, you and Julia enjoy walking Bucket at night. There's a festival in town. It brings in folks from faraway places. One of them tries to mug you with a knife. Bucket gets kicked. B -b -b fuck dog Julia yells. She gets flustered and has trouble speaking when she's stressed. You confront the attacker. You scare him away. You reach into your pocket like you've got a gun and threaten to kill him. You manage to scare all three of you. He runs away. Julia asks to take a different path from that day forward. You say okay. You don't want to go that way either. From then on, you walk by the river. I knew it. Should have picked the German Shepherd. Plans to have kids get waylaid by work. Julia gets offered a job at Yale. 
Yale's in Connecticut, 2,000 miles away. It's a great job. Associate Department Chair. She wants to move. You absolutely do not. <sighs> Agree if she could. I want her to have the job. You know, I'm a strong believer you should never force someone you love to, you know, not follow their dreams. But I can see where this is going. You ask if she'll commute back and forth. You don't want to move to Connecticut. She says it'll be hard, but she will do it if you won't move. You tell her not to pass it up if that's what she wants. She agrees. She flies back to Boulder three times each semester. 1985. Julia is sent home from Yale on paid leave after having an episode. She lost it on a colleague for borrowing books that were important to her research. She didn't remember she had happily loaned them to him just two days prior. She was found crying in the stairwell. You say that maybe you guys should talk to someone about it. After seeing multiple doctors and having many tests, they're worried that Julia might be suffering from early onset dementia. She's 41. You both decide to keep it a secret for now. is getting older Julia comments that it's kind of nice because he gets in less trouble around the house a week later she goes back to the university 1987 Julia's affliction gets worse she can't remember things in class her research is in shambles she drives her car to the next town over for no particular reason and has to be brought home by the police. She's devastated. She's sent home on permanent medical leave. Some days you get the Julia who calls you a dope and your unborn children, little idiots. Other days you get a stranger. She pulls you into bed to make love. After five minutes, she goes into a panic believing her dad's at the door. You tell her family. They are crushed and begin to make trips to and from their home in Australia to visit her. For a while, your friends come by with little things to brighten the day. She gets worse. 1988. You spend your days following Julia around the house. You count the seconds between the two weekly visits from Daniel, the nurse. He suggests that Julia could live somewhere else, somewhere with 24-hour care, a home. It sits with you for a couple of months. You decide to move her into a full-time care facility. I'm not trained. I can't look after someone with dementia. This game is already making me want to cry. Like I, I nearly cried when it said about dementia. I don't know if you could tell. I definitely felt a bit choked up. Hey, buddy. A family agrees for your decision. You find a fantastic place in Boulder and move her there. You see her every day. Than every other day. You go out to the bar with your old friends. It's just not the same. You get the feeling that every wife tells her husband, if you ever put me in a home like Henry did, I will cut your balls off. You slowly decide to not see your old friends that much. Julia's sister, Susan, moves to Boulder to be close to her. She visits her every day. You go with her some of the time. 
Susan buys you an old typewriter and urges you to use it if you won't see a therapist. You won't. You've always really liked Susan. Months go by. Bucket dies. Julia doesn't remember him when you tell her. Sometimes it takes her a minute to lock in on you. In the back of your mind, you believe it's because you see her less and less, and seeing her less and less makes her forget you more. You think. Summer is coming, and you see an ad in the paper for a job. You take it. This is hard. And I can't imagine how hard it would be for both parties. You know. This is going to be a rough series already. I can tell. I can hop over it. I don't really want to hop over it. I'm going to go up the stairs. And I'm going to admire the beauty of this place. Now I could just go in. Yeah, let's go in. Let's turn on the tower. Turn on, turn on the power, not the tower. Hello, Two Forks Tower. Hello? Um, hello? Whoever this is? It's Henry, right? Yeah. I'm Delilah. Yeah, that's what the guy said on the phone. So, what's wrong with you? Excuse me? People take this job to get away from something. So, what's wrong? What's wrong with you? <laughs> That's a great idea. Go ahead. Look, I just hiked for two days, so I don't really follow whatever it is you're doing right now. You take a stab at what's wrong with me. Fine. Then, can I... What, sleep? Forever? Pine sure, cone! Okay, now go ahead. Um, you've killed three ex-husbands. Okay. Uh, you've killed three husbands. You're a black widow and you're just out here until the heat dies down and then you'll kill again. Ooh, very good. Bravo, Henry. <laughs> okay, I sleep now? Not quite. Now you. Okay, good night. Bye. Let's see. I don't know anything about you, but maybe... I like the map. You just really like trees. Maybe it's, gosh, maybe it's a borderline fetish. A tree fetish. <laughs> Good night. <laughs> Good night. Welcome to the job. I am going to love this. I, the, the sense of humor. The typewriter. We have been typewriting. Morning, Henry. Well, I guess good afternoon. <laughs> You probably slept like a rock. Anyway, uh, there's still a few hours of daylight to get some work in. I can see you at your desk, so call me when you're ready. You see me at the desk? That's a bit creepy. Hey, sorry. Guess I slept in. You got a relaxing, what, 14 hours of sleep? Whew. Yeah, Jesus. I guess it's what, 6? 6.45. Whoops. Don't worry about it. That hike puts everyone out of commission for a day or two. But now that you're up, let me quickly get you acquainted with the job. Oh my There's god, why do I have so many supplies? A round map on it. Do you see it? Yep. Okay, yeah, I see it. This is the Osborne Firefinder, invented in 1914 by W.B. Osborne? You use this to spot, you guessed it, fi- What the fuck? What is it? Nothing, um... You, uh, you use this to... Oh, fuck me! Good God, language, lady. Out your west-facing window. Are you seeing what I'm seeing? Uh, west. Where's... Those fucking fireworks? Where? Which way's west? I don't know which way's west. Oh, N, to use compass. I need you to confirm. Do you see them? Yeah. Whoa, that's not legal, right? Uh... 
no. You need to get down there right now and stop them. Fire danger is through the fucking roof. Is that really my job? Your job is whatever I say it is. Look, the closest ranger is like two days away. Oh, Go down boy. there and set them straight. Like, kick the shit out of them sort of straight? No, 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 no. <laughs> Jesus, no. What? I'm not a cop. It's not like I've got a rule book over here. Just make sure they don't do it again. Take their shit. All right, fine. Don't feed anyone a knuckle sandwich. Okay, I will get try. Going. You'll probably need a rope to get down the shale between you and the lake, if I remember right. There should be one in the supply box on the way. The code is one, two, three, four. It's actually that for all of them. That is that is actually quite accurate. Smart. Shut up. Um, in a lot of places, um, that I've worked, if we've like, you know. This this isn't coming from my mouth, but in a lot of places, especially for working outdoors, um, codes are either shared and or um, easy to remember because there's a lot of them to remember at the end of the day. Right, I need to keep moving we west. I'm good with directions. West is conveniently this way. And I can read my map. Find rope. In, oh, I can zoom in. Uh, in cash, oh, I am facing not west. How am I? F oh no, I am facing west. Okay, okay, I know where we're going. We need to go to cash three o six. Okay, let's follow this. This is not going to go badly at all. I promise. I'm good with directions. I have never once got lost in a video game ever. Ever. I promise. To be fair, actually, in Outer Wilds, I feel like I've done really good with directions. But somehow I feel like I'm going to struggle more with this because I'm, like, I don't know. Flat. I don't know. Wow. How do I find it easier to navigate 3D spaces than I do to navigate freaking not 3D spaces? Like 2D is easy, is harder for some reason. Oh, oh. Sounds. Is this the cash box? Oh, that's closer than I was expecting. So, are there a lot of these out in the woods? Yeah, we got them all over the Shoshone. Uh, they saved us a lot of back and forth from the trailhead. I didn't know I was going to have to Don't just do it. Don't take all the good stuff. Yeah, all right. Yeah! Oh! Oh my god, this is so cool. Right, so I can get different things. What's the note say? Ron, hey man. Guy who couldn't take it, so I looked up his lookout and put some stuff in the box. Found one of those bars you liked, hiking into the park. But let's get fucked when I'm back. Love, Dave. Okay, so. There's an old rope. I'm not going to take the other things, I don't think. I am going to leave the bars there because someone else put them there. Um, I feel like I should really lock that again. But I've got a feeling I can't. So, let's keep moving. Ooh. Westwards. All right, I've just got to keep moving. I think until I find them. Over that direction, from the sounds of it. Ah, to toggle jogging. Uh, why would? Just why? Like to me, this seems like really obvious that you wouldn't set off fireworks in a forest especially during like dry season but people aren't always that clever you know people are sometimes a little bit dim or ignorant or they do know and they just don't care that's also entirely plausible right let's attach to that carabiner is it gravity facing is it gravity loaded? Yes, it is gravity loaded. It is time to repel. Oh, I'm in my element here. This isn't quite my job, but this is actually <laughs> got some striking. No, no, no! 
Striking similarities to my job. Come on, Henry. You can do it. Come on, buddy. Up you get. Hey. What the hell's wrong with you? My rope snapped coming down the shale slide. You didn't break anything, did you? No, I think I'll make it. Well, be careful for Christ's sake. I'm trying to be careful. I didn't do it on purpose. It's not like I was like, uh, hey, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to break the rope. It is a hell of a nice camping spot down here by the lake. I haven't been down there in years, but yeah, Jonesy Lake area is perfect. This is gorgeous. Like, just look at this place. Right, well, I don't really... Ah, there's a fire. There's some kind of fire down here. And cans. Finding a bunch of empty beer cans. They threw them all over hell. The idiots down at the lake? Yeah, them. I just found where they're hanging out. Fantastic. They left their packs tied up here. Don't fuck with them. The last thing we need is some hikers filing a report about harassment. Found the fireworks. They didn't even try to hide them. Uh, well, confiscate them. Yup. These are mine now. Uh. Oh, look. They decided to have a campfire, too. You know, they color-coded the fire danger signs in case people were illiterate. But I guess that doesn't take into account just plain stupid, does it? That's what I was saying. Oh, no. I found a bra. A nudie pyromaniac. Remain professional. Uh, there are, uh, panties. There are what? I don't want to say that word again. Why? Because you're 12? I found them in the lake. Skinny dipping? Yeah. Is that a guy over there? Oh boy. Enjoy dealing with that. <sighs> you gotta take it easy with the fireworks, alright? You ought to take it easy at the Sizzler buffet. <laughs> Chelsea? What? He's just some loser out in the woods. I mean, he's grody. Why do guys think it's all right to just stare at girls? Hey, just so you're aware, I confiscated your fireworks. Our fireworks? What? You dick! Also, setting off fireworks out here isn't just stupid, it's illegal. Yeah, so is stealing, asshole. It's not stealing, it's so confiscating. Fucking. Literally, yeah, he is, he is quite sad. So lay off him. Right, now I need to find my way back. Jesus. Uh, so. It's done. Well, that's ominous. Hopefully there won't be any more trouble. Good. Thanks for going down there. Yeah, people can be mean. People can be cruel. This is, I, I think, one thing to take from this, and hopefully you guys who are watching this, you know, I, I, I like to think that this community is quite nice. Always treat people with respect. Always, you know, you don't know what people are going through. Like, yeah, those girls are drunk. And, you know, they're teenagers. All the, well, all the best will in the world. Teenagers can sometimes be very abrasive because they're maybe not necessarily thinking on the same wavelength. You know, if you're having a good time, you're having a good time. Fair enough. I was the same. I'm no longer a teenager. But, you know, just be nice to people. Yeah, this guy is ruining your day. But his life's falling apart, you know? You don't know how much calling a sad man a sad man will hurt them. Just be nice. Let's just agree. Let's agree. Be nice, everyone. If I catch you not being nice, well, whatever. I, I can't do anything. And how the hell am I going to get back up here? Uh, 
Right, let's... So if I'm... Here... This looks like the only real way... To get back up there. Unless... Do I have to go, like, through the canyon, maybe? Because I can't climb that. Am I going to have to go... By a... I think if I look down there, there is a way up to a cave, and then the cave... Oh, we're going to have to go through that. We're going to have to go there. We're going to have to go there. Ah... Uh... For now, though, guys, I'm going to call it there purely because I'm running out of time and I've got a lot of things that I need to be doing today. This game is already giving me incredible vibes. Um, it's not often a game can nearly make me cry in the first five minutes. Um, just purely from telling me the story. And I think they've done a masterful job here. The fact they can get you from crying to then showing you <laughs> Henry being a Victoria's Secret model. And, you know, it's that kind of masterful weaving of emotions. So they knock you down and they pick you back up again, just so you're not completely depressed. And I love that. Thank you all so much for watching, however. As usual, I have been Sturks. You guys have been incredible. And I'll catch you all later for the next episode.